Good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for being here today. Uh, we're going to start our, our presentation about secure and programmable future, future internet. Um, this is the outline that we prepared for our presentation. We'll talk a little bit about us, then some contextualization. Uh, we will introduce the Profisa project, the, our uh, ideas for testbed integration, uh, the architecture of the, pro uh, the, the, the project, some achievements, and also some perspectives of next steps. Well, a little bit about us. Uh, my name is Lucas Bonden. I'm a RD coordinator uh, at the Brazilian Research and Education Network, uh, RNP, in Brazil. And my colleague here is Professor Marcelo Marota. He is assistant professor at the University of Brasilia in Brazil. And we have quite a long story together. Uh, we start uh, when I started my master's degree uh, in 2012, I think. He was in his second year. And we quickly, quickly became friends, started to organize projects together, uh, events together, and work in the same projects. And he was there when I moved to Brasilia. Uh, he left uh, his uh, position as an R&D coordinator at RNP that I took and became an assistant professor. We also fish together sometimes. Uh, he loves fishing. I don't love that much, but we try to fish together. And we are now really, really good friends. And it's an honor to be here today presenting the project together with you. And one could say, I would say we are like brothers, but I don't fight the, my brothers as much as I fight him. So maybe you are my nemesis. Time will show. But yeah, it's an honor to be here with you, man. So well, a little bit about our institutions. Uh, as I said, I'm from the Brazilian National and Research Network. And uh, is basically the organization that helped to bring the internet in Brazil in the early 90s. And uh, today, our network reaches all the states of the country, offering our secure and high capacity services. And we are also interconnected to other education and research networks in Latin America, North America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Oceania through uh, terrestrial and submarine optical fiber cables. And I put here some of our numbers. We have around 800 connected organizations, more than 4 million uh, users, uh, 50 community connections, and connection, uh, connections uh, over 100 gigabits per second. And we also have the Brazilian research backbone that we call, that is the EP network, that is basically the Brazilian academic network that provides quality internet access to every institution connected to it and supports the transmission of large volumes of data uh, for scientific projects and development of new technologies. And a fun fact is that the IP uh, is, the name IP comes from a tree in Brazil that uh, this is the IP tree, and it flourishes in different periods of the year, and each period it flourishes with different colors. So, and the white one the lasts for only four days, so if someone calls you a white IP in Brazil, you should feel very, very, uh, I would put it, delicate, I would say. But anyways, uh, IP is also the, sounds like IP in Brazil, so, IP not networks is IP network is like saying IP network. So I think that's a very clever name. So we also have uh, test bed services uh, at RNP that provides distributed computer infrastructure to allow remote experimentation for researchers in the country, and it has more than 120 high capacity services servers, uh, and it's spread. Uh, over more than 34 locations in the country. And well, as I said, it provides remote access and it, it is in, interconnected through the RNP's backbone. So I put here some of our numbers. We have 40, uh, more than 400 uh, CPU cores, 1.7 petabytes of RAM, and also 124 petabytes of storage. Well, that's enough about RNP. Let's talk about a little bit uh, about uh, uh, Universidade de Brasília, the University of uh, the Capital of Brazil, and that offers free public education of excellence for Brazilian and foreign students. Uh, has one of the highest rating in the Brazilian Ministry of Education's general, general course index, and is among the 
11 best higher education institutes in the country. And it has 26 institutes and colleges with uh, 53 departments, 136 in undergraduate courses, 86, 86 master degree courses, and 68 doctor degree courses. Well, that's enough about us. That uh, I'll uh, talk a little bit about our institutions, so a little bit of context now about our project. Well, uh, computer networks have witnessed uh, changes in usage profiles with adverse requirements such as low latency, secure flow, high resilience at any time. And when applied over programmable networks, uh, such changes uh, may involve modifications to the network software developed to the devices, to the forwarding devices. And software engineering techniques can be applied to improve, enhance, and optimize the development of network software. That's what we believe in. And especially in situations when change in the network uh, uh, modify the profile of the network. So, that's where the PROFISA project is uh, located. Uh, PROFISA stands for Programmable Future Internet for Secure Software Architecture. And it was proposed to investigate, map, and advance the use of software engineering techniques when applied to programmable networks. And the main objectives of the project are improve the structural and functional quality of the process of developing network programs. Uh, provide a modular and reusable code framework for network programs development, and also execute network programs in real programmable environments implemented on testbeds. And right now we have five different members together with RNP and University of Brasilia. We have the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, uh, Federal University of ABC, and also the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Well. As I said, we aim to have testbed integration. RNP has a really good uh, testbed service that provides uh, uh, resources to researchers in Brazil. And we are aiming to integrate uh, the RNP testbed somehow with the Fabric testbed. And it will create a real programmable network environment uh, with latest generation capabilities. And it will allow also the experimentation uh, of different use cases, such as the use of programmability in the data plane using P4. And P4 is one of the concepts that both RNP testbeds and the Fabric testbed is implementing right now. So now I will pass the mic to my colleague here so he can talk a little bit about the architecture of the project. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here. It's a pleasure to be talking with you guys. But first of all, let's first introduce, thank the introduction of my friend, because uh, we have like this longest history of collaboration. And why I'm talking about it? Because I think that the word that is being spoken here in, in the Net2 community exchange is about collaboration. So we've been collaborating since we, are, we were like, master's student degree students and master uh, and doctorate students as well. So it's really nice to, to see that this kind of acquaintance is, is still go on even after we get at our professional life. So thank you for the introduction. I was not expecting that. So now let's try to f stay a, a little bit about Profisa. I think that my friend here already introduced it. It's a five-year project. So we are working with uh, RNP, with another three universities, and I have the luck to be one of the, the fourth university involved, that is the University of Brasilia. Uh, I was one of, the, one of the, the people that were involved during the, the proposal of this project, and it's under the grant of the FAPESP, one of our, of, our grant uh, foundations that actually give uh, this kind of um, give this kind of in incentive to to work together, and in Profisa, what we can see is that when it talked about programmable network, a lot of people thinks a lot of different things nowadays. People are already thinking about uh, cloud, how to put cloud cl close to the edge, and etc and how to do f network function virtualization, how to do slicing of the network, and so on. 
But uh, one thing that we cannot run away from is that programmable network still works on top of our traditional paradigm of software networking. We are not talking about um, what we can do on top of the network, but also what we can change on the network. So when we come to the programmable network, we are talking about software networking. So how to work with this networks completely built on top of software. And when we come to that, we struggle a little to understand how we can develop on that. I don't know if you, you have a lot, uh, already go to this kind of situation that you want to work on top of programmable network and then you arrive to something like a controller. And which the controller does, uh, it will take all the control from the network and centralize in a central point and then you will be able to control the forwarding devices by sending forwarding rules to it. Okay, nice. How do I program anything on top of that? Ah, oh, it depends. If you have the real controller, will be something that you change inside the controller. If you be the using like a Onus controller, will be another stuff. So when you look to that, and I am assuming that you already am, you are all already acquainted to the software finite network uh, planes and etc. You will see that you have a lot of time working on top of that to finally de develop your first software to it. But I am assuming that all of you know about software network. So just a, a, a brief explanation: forwarding plane is where the switches and all the network device stays. Control control plane is all the controllers that this, this centralized entity will control the the network devices. And the application plane is where all the, applic the software application that uh, we develop will be using the controllers then to change the very behavior of the network. Also, we have this kind of API that we call the management API. And the management API itself will be an interface that will allow us to grab some information, extract some, some statistics from the network. And when we take a look on, on this whole scenario, this pretty much defines what is a programmable network through the use of software networking. By using that, then you, you will arrive at the, the following question. How do I program it? So you will face all the, the struggles I was saying, like how, how you will pr propose anything that the northbound API, that's the API on top of the control plane, that was supposed to be a very clear defined interface and it's not. It's barely existent at some of the controllers that I was mentioning. And, but it is, and the softbound API, the softbound API, no, the softbound API is something already well stated, it's a protocol, it's the open flow protocol. If you are well aware of, of SDN, you're probably already get to know open flow somehow. But when you look at the application plane, the northbound API is not well defined. Some of them have something there, like uh, Onus controller has some RESTful API that you can use, and then do some kind of web service connection to the controller and get some statistics. But how we will develop a software to that? Will it be some, some kind of a webhook? Will it be some kind of uh, script that we will determine? Where it will be executed? How it will execute and how it will change the, the network behavior? And what are the impacts of that? So this is pretty much what we, uh, we want to answer. But on top of that, now software-defined networking is, is, is trying to englobe, uh, also gradually incorporate the idea of data plane programmable as well. So a programmable data plane. How you do that? Using P4, that's another language. So if you look at this figure, on top of that, there's the SDN applications that we don't know how to develop. And then they introduce the now new applications that you can use to program the data plane at the lower level, the foreign plane, where you will introduce a, a, a WDL, that's a determined language for that, that plane, that will work on top of the switch and then do some kind of, of packet inspection or something like it. This will be very difficult to program as well. So how, sh how uh, a proper operator, how a proper network uh, guy will come to this scenario and develop anything. This is what Profisa is intended to do. We are trying to propose a project where we will try to 
introduce software engineer aspects that will be able to determine what are the main goals of the network, and through the goals of the network, how will uh, uh, any type of developer be able to create uh, their own code, and how will they code it by making error fixing, doing proper plan, mitigating code smells to avoid errors, doing kind of introduction of design patterns that is, are specific for network devices, and then by using all of those resources per se, or, or even good ways to, to develop the, the, the software itself, then we can establish a software production line. That this is the main goal of, of actually the Profisa. How can you model the entire creation of your software by first introducing the goals and then create a model based on those goals. After that, how you can parameterize that and also figure what will be the objective function that will be fulfilling the goal that you want to have and what's the cost function as well, how will this impact everything. Finally, a synthesization of the code that will embrace both and then it, it will be code as rules, routines, or even some kind of codes or piece of codes that will be available. And then finally, you will be packing this. And by packaging, you will be having overlayer applications and underlayer applications, where overlayer applications are meant to be working on top of controllers and the underlayer application on top of before language. When you go through this kind of packaging, then you can establish a, po a proper subs um, publish subscribe environment that you can publish your application to the network to work on top of your programmable network. This is the type of thing that we are intending to create within Profisa. We are at our third, our third year of project already, and part of the, the, the several things that we developed are coming to be used in different use cases, of course, because we have to, to place it in an uh, environment that makes sense. And for that, we've been exploiting 5G and 6G scenarios where we have like, I'm sorry, the, the, the figure is in Portuguese because uh, we use it in, during the, the project submission, but uh, I can show you after uh, a ver uh, English version, but let's do it. So it's there, there's like the, the cloud provider where you have like the applications of the cloud and then those applications will be using the radio access network. The radio access network itself will be running different type of uh, topologies. Here we are just using like fog RH, like some antennas that can process their, their, all of their, their data in centralized points like a kind of centralized radio access network and then you can put some uh, applications to run on top of that, like caching, like um, different local services. I don't know if you are well aware, but Brazil was one of the first to inaugurate the first um, virtual provider. Uh, yeah, it's dated from 2000 and around 2010, 2011. It was a Christian <laughs> operator that tried to use the infrastructure of the other operators to give uh, clerical statement to their users. So it was the very first case of virtual operator. So because of that, then we have a lot of different uh, types of, of ideas here on this scenario where we use a, a combination of SDN with virtualization to come to new solutions and to reintroduce all these applications, even the, 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 the virtual network operators, to work on top of the infrastructure that are well established. And then for P4, we want to use P4 to change the way we do caching, because caching is about the popularity of the content, of course. Many of you already work with that on, and then are even better experts than me. But also, you know that the, even the um, the way you do the caching changes around the time. But, and if you don't use a way to reprogram everything, caching will be getting outdated and then you have to give like manual uh, changes on the network and that, that may be not be working. So this is for this 5G, 6G use case. 
This one is what uh, you know, the University of Brazil is working more closely. Uh, this is a, a secure uh, and private network where we have several militarized networks and all of the militarized layers are supposed to have their, their switches connected and all of them will be controlled by different controllers but then we have to push software there that we can de detect, mitigate attacks. We, are, uh, we nowadays, we are working to how to mitigate attacks online hate, and then we are using P4 for that. And for SDN, we are trying to take a look on the detections using flow. So kind of improvement of performance. I don't know if you are well aware on this area, but uh, for security aspects, uh, if you do flow detection, it's like 90% more efficient than do deep packed inspection. But this is for, for um, this is actually quite expected because when you are using flows, you are already using metadata instead of using the whole uh, packet header. So I will not enter in too much, <laughs> much um, details because I don't have the time. <laughs> But uh, also, I will be able to, to discuss this after. But what is expected is that, that like the, the more external uh, layer of the network will be the one that will receive the higher traffic because it will be received from everywhere. So I have to, to use performance on that. But then on the, more, uh, the less militarized zones where the traffic should be more, more centered and less spread, then you are supposed to use some kind of deep pack inspection. Then we are working on top of this use case to try to reprogram the network, and even the, secure, the security levels that we can achieve with that. Finally, this is uh, the last scenario that we are using for the use cases, is the Internet of Things scenario, where we have like a, a rural application of the devices, and then by rural, I mean like literally some kind of sensors that are in the crops or actuators that are working on top of uh, water pivots and so on. And all of those equipment are connected and they are intending to send their data through the, the whole internet. Of course, this, um, the scenario we, we were thinking about information being spread along like very big, uh, uh, big farms. And if, if you have the time, please visit Goiás. We'll see what I'm talking about. It's like uh, kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of area. And all of them will be using this kind of devices to gather information about nitrogen, about the, how, how is humidity, and et cetera. And all of them have to send it to a sync device. When they come to the sync device, one of the things that happen there is that all the devices that are close to the sink get way depleted. And then how you can change and reprogram the way they are using and making this kind of ad hoc network uh, to, to become better and with better performance without having to manually go in there and change the code of the devices and so on. Then SDN and all the, the, all the, the software pieces that I'm talking about comes in game where you can use P4, for instance, to reprogram these devices, and, are, and currently UFABC is having good results on that. They are changing the protocols, they are changing the way the ad hoc network is, is created, and this is improving performance and reducing the, and actually ex, um, enhancing the whole, the life cycle of the devices. But I mean, this is our part of the use cases that we are working on top. And we have several achievements in terms of research with this collaboration. Most of this research were, were all proposed and submitted to different uh, venues for, and then uh, we have like several, several articles published. And, but what, what we are looking now, we are looking for lightweight test beds using P4. What's that about? It's, one thing that we are struggling is that whenever we, f we try to start working with this kind of technology, you have to rely on test beds. It's not everyone that has access to test beds. Even back in Brazil, we have like very difficult, uh, difficult 
enrollment process so that the, and applications that you can use to apply for a test bed usage. And it's not because it's anything bad about that, it's just that it's not too mature enough. And because of that, then students, uh, even postdoc students and etc., most of them cannot use the test beds, so they have to use their own infrastructure, like computers and etc. One thing that we are looking inside this kind of, of things is to introduce a lightweight test bed based on containers. And now the containers will be creating the, the whole software network. And now the software-wise network will be possible to be reprogrammed using P4, using SDN, and so on. And why did I not place SDN as a word there? Because we, already, we are already able to do it with SDN. Now we are looking to, to different ways to introduce P4 on that. Because then P4 has to reprogram the kernel itself. So it's not that easy to do, and even less easier when you use containers, which almost looks like impossible, but we, we had a lot of results on that, and it's making a difference. Another thing is integrating SDN with P4, something that we talk about, like SDN exists, P4 exists, but how they do interconnect? How are they integrated? This is a question that few people are looking at, because probably one will actually destroy the, the will actually destroy the performance of the other and even make it infeasible. Depending on how you, you program P4, P, SDN will not even be able to connect to the switches anymore. So how can you use both technologies without actually making one infeasible to be used as the other and or to impair their, their performance? So this is something that we are looking into and we already have some results, actually quite good results. Regarding policy aware system, so how to introduce not just goals, because goals is like uh, my goal on the network, ah, it's uh, to, to make a, a, a network that will not have any issue with capacity. I don't, I don't mind about uh, delay, but I, I do mind about having capacity for an, an IP security cameras network, for instance you would be more, more concerned about the, the throughput than the, the delay. But how will your system perform with that? How you transform those goals in actually policies and then the policies then introduce it in the system. When we look at that, we are trying to work on top of our programmable networks and we are gradually integrating actually with EBN, with the intended based network. Why? Because it's much easier for me to say something that I want than actually program that. So when you can extract the intent of the user and then introduce it to the network, automatically it becomes a policy. Uh, and then because of that, policy aware assistance based on EBN with SDN and P4 starts to be a very interesting. Uh, we are we are actually putting our, our cards on that, that it will become one of the killing applications for SDN, actually. Because so far, SDN is, came with the very, very interest from the, the community, but then it's becoming outdated. We are, like I said in the very beginning, we are talking about all the, the cloud being pushed through the network and then everything is cloud, you use NFV, you use containers and etc. But when you come to programmability of the switch devices, there will be limits for the NFV. Like the switch devices will become just what they are. They, are, they will not change their, functiona their functionality. So then you will need SDN and P4 for that place. And then we believe that in this kind of scenario, SDN will be coming uh, back to, to, the, to the lights and we will be starting to use it again with more interest. Also, about goal-driven development cycle. This is something that we already did with the Goldi. That's one of the platforms that we are introducing. And then they will give you a good way to pick your goal and try to narrow down what a system can be developed 
by based on that goal. I had 10 seconds. Ah, yeah, thank you. Okay, I, I, I was able to finish in time, but um, I, I invite you to, to come to me and to, and to my friend Bondan to talk about it. We are very uh, interested in these subjects and we invite you to make any, any questions if now, but if it's not able to now, then after. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Right, thank you. Um, I have a question. Where did you get the pictures? Uh, it's a secret. <laughs> thank you, guys.